off now. Um, thanks for coming, and um, I did ask in putting out the call for the webinar, I said if anybody had any questions to send questions in advance. I got a couple of questions in advance, but that doesn't mean that you can't ask some today. So I see Jenny's typing. If you've got um, a question, send it on, and we will. Um, I'll see if I can answer it. Oh, people can't hear. All right, well, I'll let the, the guru, um, Jeffrey Hamilton, work on that. Can anybody else hear? If you see up at the top, um, there's a button where you can um, raise your hand. If you can hear, can you raise your hand? The button is across the top there. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, so I'm assuming that um, that most of you can hear, so I'm going to proceed, and I hope, Jenny, you can get it figured out. All right, so I'm going to start with um, the big news here at the State Library, which is, of course, is our budget cut that we took recently in July. Um, we experienced uh, about a $350,000 budget cut. Um, I can tell you that the budget cut was... Um, pretty much standard throughout all state government. It, we were not singled out for a cut. Um, the DCR, the Department of Cultural Resources, was cut a total of 1.3 million, as you can see. So um, we don't know what the future holds, but we know that this year was, it wasn't as bad as last year. I guess that's the good news. The way we elected to take that cut was um, a s small reduction to the state aid program, the state aid for public libraries, and we really hated to do that. Um, over 75% of our total budget is comprised of pass-through funds such as state aid and LSTA money and NC Live funding directly from the legislature. So when we get a percentage cut, which is what we received, um, it really hits us. It, we have to realize that cut over about 25% of our total budget which is really tough. Um, we took 197,000 out of statewide programs and services and this was um, distributed. The biggest hit here came from the library development section which is the portion of the state library that works directly with libraries. Uh, a smaller portion of that was realized by the library services section and the government and heritage library in that section. We also uh, realized about $86,000 in savings by giving up two staff positions within the state library. Um, one of these is a support position up here in the library development administration section. So we're working now to figure out how to um, real assign some of those duties and just not do some of the others. Um, so we're hoping that next year we'll have better news, but um, I guess this could have been worse. Um, our personnel news is that Denise Sigmund, the assistant state librarian, is retiring at the end of this month, and we're all going to be very sorry to see her go. She's been with the state library for 34 years and knows where all the bodies are buried, so um, we may have a struggle once she's not with us anymore. Uh, we are hiring in um, two positions in library development. One is the NC Cardinal Manager, and this was held by Grant Kerr. NC Cardinal is our um, shared ILS system, and I'm going to talk more about that later. I'll just let you know that um, I think we've made an offer in that. Uh, actually, we have made an offer, and it has been accepted. So um, we'll be announcing that very soon, and then we will be um, proceeding on with that program for um, this year and in the foreseeable future. We are also hiring... Um, to fill Pam Jascott's position, and she was a consultant for communications. We've received applications for that, and we're looking to um, looking those over now. And we'll be setting up interviews. Okay, the Government and Heritage Library. Well, actually, just as background, the State Library has three sections or three different departments that all um, are part of the State Library. Many people know the State Library as the Library Development Section, and that is Jennifer Pratt and her staff of consultants who are out and about around the state. Um, that's Library Development. We have two other sections as well, and one is the 
Government and Heritage Library. This is the actual library portion of the State Library, and that library is 200 years old this year. We've been celebrating the birthday all year long. So I'm going to be bringing you news from the Government and Heritage Library, or GHL, and also from the Library for the Blind and the Physically Handicapped, which is uh, our third um, part of the State Library. So we're starting with uh, GHL today. Um, the Government and Heritage Library has a digital information management program that is really getting a lot of attention nationwide. These are sort of the rock stars of the digital world. They have won, in July alone, they've won two awards, national awards, and one of the awards they won was for this tool called CINCH. And CINCH stands for Capture, Ingest, and Checksum. This was funded through an IMLS Sparks admission grant, so it wasn't a normal grant through the State Library. It's one that they applied for and received on their own right. Uh, the tool was created to address digital preservation needs of small and mid-sized institutions throughout North Carolina. So it could be used in a variety of ways. One example is a solo university archivist or preservation librarian responsible for gathering the history of their institution. They can use Cinch to download and clean records and files. And by clean, I mean check for viruses, automatically create metadata, and so forth. And these files that they can clean are things such as newsletters, meeting minutes, budgets, images, and they could be on institutional websites with a variety of different formats. Um, so without having to depend on expensive infrastructure not readily available to smaller institutions, one of the most challenging technical aspects of digital preservation is achieved. This tool is available for free in North Carolina. If you live outside North Carolina, I'm sorry, you're going to have to pay for it. It's hosted through a partnership with NC Live and administered by government and heritage library staff. And those staff are already hard at work on Cinch 2, so they're going to make it even better. If you'd like more information about this, there's the contact information at the bottom of the screen. And don't worry about scribbling down these email addresses and URLs because we're going to post this, as I've mentioned, on the website and you'll be able to um, get these later after the, after the presentation. So what else is the GHL up to? Well, they are the ones who created and maintain NCpedia, which is our North Carolina online encyclopedia. And it's always expanding. The primary users of this have been students, especially students doing these old, the wonderful state, uh, you know, who's the state dog, what's the state flower projects. But we're seeing users expand beyond that age range because we're adding some new content. And the content that we're adding is from the University of North Carolina Press, and it's the Encyclopedia of North Carolina, along with the Dictionary of North Carolina Biography. So these might be useful on your own local history page. You can post a widget for NCpedia and other materials as well that you can get from our promotional materials website and the URL is right there at the bottom of the, the second part of the slide. This includes printable bookmarks, a search toolbar, search bar, search box widget, reproducible logo, and even, I love this, reproducible newsletter articles. So if your library has an, uh, a newsletter that you send out and you're, oh gee, we're, we're short a little content, we just need some filler for this section, we can provide that um, with these reproducible newsletter articles. And there are multiple ones because there's a long one, a medium one, and a short one. So we'll fit whatever space you have. Um, the, if you forget the promotional materials URL, uh, it's at the bottom. The, a link to this is at the bottom of every single page of NCpedia, so all you have to do is go to NCpedia to find it. And we hope you'll um, help us get the word out about this wonderful resource. I'm going to show you a web page now from the Shepherd Library in Pitt County. And at the very bottom, you'll see that there's a NCpedia search box right on their web page. 
And the library director, who graciously allowed me to use this um, screenshot, wanted me to let everyone know that his library will soon have a new website. So we're supposed to check back on that uh, in a few weeks. Uh, moving on. If you have any questions or comments, please just type them in and we'll try to take them as we move along. Sometimes I get on a roll and forget to check. Um, another thing that's coming out of the GHL, and this is really cool. I don't know if you all saw the, the issue of Our State Magazine. I think it came out in July. But they had a list of 100 icons of North Carolina. And this is everything from Grandfather Mountain to barbecue to, you know, you name it. Um, we thought that was such a great list, and it's gotten a lot of attention. And so our GHL staff created a resource guide that uh, really just expands on the 100 icons that were listed in the issue. It's the same icons, but it has more information about each of those icons. Um, if you go to the, um, you can, the URL will take you to that list, but this is also available for you to post on your website so that people in your neighborhood, I mean, there's icons all over the state, so the chances are that there's one in your backyard, and you could l post this list and even um, add to it about uh, your local icons. It's just a way to shine a spotlight on North Carolina, and it's been a really fun way to do that, too. Um, the Library for the Blind um, is, uh, serves the blind and the physically handicapped and people who are just having difficulty seeing print. They actually have large print books as well as tapes and digital content for people who can't see at all. Most of the population who are eligible for this service don't really self-identify as eligible. Maybe they've read all the large print books in their public library. Maybe they don't realize that this service even exists. I was in one library where an older user said, I can't use that, I'm not blind. The woman could barely see, but she wasn't blind, so she didn't think she could use it. Anyone who has difficulty seeing print or physically hand, holding a book is eligible for this service, and it's all completely free. What can, you can do is to help us get the word out uh, to your patrons. Most of the patrons of this service are lifelong library patrons who, as they age, develop um, some problem seeing, although we're seeing an influx of um, veterans now who are eligible for this service. So, if you see a patron who's uh, frustrated by your large print collection, let them know about the Library for the Blind here in Raleigh. I think they would be amazed at the services that they can get. I'm going to move into some um, territory now that's kind of in between the GHL and the LD. So, so, and some of this is just news that doesn't even have to do with the State Library. But the NC Digital Heritage Center, it does have to do with the State Library. This is funded with IMLS, and it's expanding its digitization efforts to include early high school yearbooks, and this is pretty cool. There is some criteria for those yearbooks, and I'm not going to go through all of that here, um, but once they are digitized, then they're available um, on the Internet Archive and at digitalnc.org. Um, if you are interested in getting involved in this and have yearbooks that you would like to suggest, there's contact information right there. And at any time, if you've forgotten or can't get to the um, recording of this, you can feel free to drop me an email, and I will be glad to share any of this information or the slides with you. And my email will be on the last slide. So this is a project that the State Library is heavily involved with. Here's one that I just think is so cool. The UNC Chapel Hill Library just got a pretty big NEH grant to digitize newspapers. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I know it is a very popular topic. Um, they are going to complement the, what the Digital Heritage Center has already done. So I'm mentioning this because if you've already had your newspapers digitized, then they're not going to re-digitize them. But if you have tried to get things digitized and had difficulty, then this might be an option for you. Um, 
an advisory board will be formed and they will select the titles to include. And this is so new right now that I don't even know who you can contact if you want more information because this is really hot off the press. So I would say keep your eyes um, peeled and if we, as we get information we will certainly share it because we know this is a hot topic for public libraries. Um, Open Library NC, this is a project of NC Live, and I'm mentioning it because we're almost coming to the end of a drawing for a free nook. And this is an interesting project, and I encourage you to go um, check it out because it's just so different. Um, it's a it's a collaboration, as you see, between the Internet Archive and NC Live. And what it is is that they are asking libraries to send anywhere from one to ten books to them, and these books will be scanned and added to their collection. Um, NC Live is trying to promote a hundred percent participation by libraries in North Carolina, and so you can see that they are giving the free Nook giveaway right there by if you contribute one to ten books before August 31st. So time is running short. The URL there is will have more information about how to um, contribute books and um, there's also things in there like a press release template, template, brochures, graphics and more. I think the whole idea of this open library is fascinating and I, I'm just I'm not sure how, I've heard how it works, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. So anyway, keep an eye out for that. Um, this is, the books that are um, submitted and digitized are available to any library in North Carolina. You can send anything you like. You don't have to worry about copyright. It could be something that's been donated to your library for a book sale. It can be something that you have weeded from your collection. If you want to know more, check out the URL. The Literary Map of North Carolina is another project um, that the Center for the Book, which is um, here at the State Library, is involved in with UNCG. And it's a, if you've, you've probably seen the print map somewhere, you may have one up in your library. It's, um, it's a, I've seen many framed ones around the state all over the place. Well, this is um, an opportunity to take that print map and to turn it into a online map. And I'm going to show you what it looks like now. That is the new homepage. It's so new, I don't even know if they have it up on their homepage yet. But you, as you can see, it allows you to browse by author, search by genre. I, you can go in and click on any county and see who the authors are either from that county or who have written about that county. They're adding new content all the time, so if you don't see an author there today, check back. Maybe it will be there tomorrow. Um, LSTA, the Library Services and Technology Act, is what provides federal funds for libraries in North Carolina. And at the State Library, we have an advisory committee that helps us determine um, how that those funds should be deployed. This is a very interesting year for the advisory committee because um, we work on a five-year schedule, and we have just ended up one five years, and we've had to do a big evaluation. And we're kicking off the next five years, and we've had the opportunity to do some planning. Uh, so it's exciting times, and you'll see some changes in the program over the coming year. Uh, the new members of our committee, you can see Vicki Coleman, Kevin Washburn, and Anna Yunt. And we try to have uh, a really diverse committee, both in terms of geographically around the state and also um, by type of library. So even though we're not currently um, giving grants directly to the school systems the way we used to do, we still like having that school representative, as you can see. The committee recently met on Thursday and August 9th, and we looked at the plan for 2013 and 14, and this will be the actual um, grants that will be made available to libraries around the state. 
We've, we got some great feedback in the evaluation, and thanks to everybody who provided us feedback because we're really taking that to heart. We have tweaked the schedule of the grants to make it more convenient for you, and um, that gives you a little more time to get approval up the chain of command sh uh, because we were hearing that people needed that. We've simplified the categories. Uh, we will not be giving uh, collection grants to schools. Um, and the main reason for that is that there are so many schools and we got so many applications that we were just being buried under the administrative burden for those grants. So instead of taking a, a one grant, one school approach, we're trying to come up with a way to do some sort of statewide project that will benefit all the schools and coincidentally entail a lot less paper as well. So we're in the process of doing that with the help of Kevin Washburn and the other members of the advisory committee. So we will be uh, announcing our plans for the fall, I think uh, September 7th, don't hold me to that, but I think that's when we're going to be announcing the new grant categories. And we've changed, some, we've changed those too as well based on the evaluation and the planning. What we're encouraging is for you to go ahead right now and be thinking about what are my needs? What would, what would it be nice to have a little bit of money to help me do? So instead of waiting to hear what the grant categories are and then slotting yourself into one, go ahead and be thinking now what it is that you need. We have bigger and broader grant categories and fewer grant categories. So, um, and these are all reflective of our four new goals that I mentioned in the last um, webinar. And if you need more information about those, you can check the um, LSTA um, site on our uh, on the website of the State Library or contact any member of the LSTA Advisory Committee and those or State Library staff and find out more. The new categories will be announced though in September and we are looking forward to having um, some really interesting grant projects this year as a result of our um, new plan and new goals. Um, the State Library Commission is the board that advises the State Library and they, um, they just retired the Public Library Standards Committee that developed the standards and then they didn't need to exist anymore. So that committee's gone away and at the same meeting they appointed a new committee to study the, the um, issue of affiliated libraries. And this, is, this dates back to 1990. And the State Library examined how it provided service to libraries of all types. And um, it was decision was made at that time to no longer provide services to libraries that did not qualify to receive state aid. Some of those libraries that did not that no longer qualified or did not no longer receive services, let me put it that way, um, did decide to affiliate with the local county library, and some did not. And that's the way the situation has been um, to this day. Um, some of those libraries are fine libraries that are really doing great service and um, have robust um, services for their patrons. They have you know, computers that people use and story time. So just like any other library that you could walk in in the state. Some could really more effectively or more um, correctly be called book, book collections. Um, they're all volunteer. They don't have a book budget. Um, well, you can get the drift if you've ever been in one of those. So what we want to do is the state library wants to look at these libraries and say, really, where should they where should they belong and what kind of assistance can we provide to a county library director who is being approached by the small towns in the county who have you know created their own library and the library saying hey send me some books give us some of your resources um, so we're trying to um, look into that issue I presented this um, presentation at the North Carolina Public Library Directors meeting last week and heard loud and clear that we need to proceed cautiously and we don't want to upset any existing arrangements so um, 
the committee actually had a conference call this morning and we are um, slowing down. We don't want to um, upset any of the libraries or any of the counties, but we are going to continue to study the issue and we'll be back with a report when we figure out what's really going on there. The representatives from the State Library, uh, State Library Commission who are on the committee are listed there and you can see that Laura is the staff liaison. If you need more information about that, or would like to know more. Um, moving to library development, um, we recently decided to make um, LibGuides available for all public libraries and community college libraries in the state, and I can tell you they are a big hit. As of last week, and the numbers have probably gone up since then, 59 community colleges and 54 public libraries had activated their free LibGuides account. If you have not, you might want to check into it. Um, we provide, it's an online web page maker, and it allows the quick and easy design of information-centered path, pathfinders, subject guides, etc. Um, you can see we did training at five locations around the state. One of the questions I got prior to the webinar today is, are you going to do more LibGuides training? We're hearing that loud and clear that people want that, so we will indeed be um, doing more training of LibGuides this um, fall. I'm not sure what that will look like. It hasn't been designed yet, but stay tuned. Um, some of the outcomes of this project, you can see two public libraries with no website are setting up websites using LibGuides. It's that easy. We're getting fabulous feedback. People are writing back and saying, oh my gosh, look at what I created and sending us URLs. So um, it's, been, it's been very popular and I'm, I'm glad that we're doing it. We have a lot of support materials uh, and on this uh, URL at the bottom of the page. And let me take you there right now and show you some of the things. And this is just some of the stuff that's there. So remember I was talking about the NCpedia search box. Well, that's also available from this uh, LibGuide toolkit that we have put together. So we have widgets for you, widgets and boxes, um, NC Cardinal catalog searching if you're uh, part of that project interactives, document sharing, LibCal tips, and a discussion board. These are the tabs across the top of the page. If you're having a problem and you'd like to seek some advice from fellow LibGuide users, you can post it there. Um, you can, um, so libraries are encouraged to share items here and the State Library will be sharing with you. So this is the kind of place where if um, someone creates a really great web page or a really great subject guide for a certain topic, they can post it here and we can all benefit from their work and not have to reinvent the wheel. So um, that's been a nice little side um, benefit of having LibGuides in libraries. Any questions? I guess not everybody's hand is up. Either nobody has a question or everybody has a question. I will move on. Um, in library development, uh, we have another advisory committee because we don't want to operate in a vacuum. We, we want to get advice from everybody that we can. The Continuing Education Advisory Committee um, advises us on um, continuing education um, around the state. The good news is that the new LSTA plan or are the new LSTA guidelines for the next five years allow us to once again spend federal money on continuing education. This was not possible in the last five years. That was disallowed. So I think you can expect to see a little ramping up of CE activities from the state. One of the first things that this committee is doing, and this, that this has been underway since before the new LSTA plan, um, they wanted to create a portal that would be the one-stop shop for continuing education activities. I need some training on XYZ. I, my staff need training on this or that or the other thing. You can go to LibGuides, the LibGuides train station, and there's the URL, and see what kind of um, continuing education activities are available. So let's go look at that now and see what it looks like. Um, 
uh, the tabs across the top are what we have up there now. This is change, not changing, but it's being added to every day. So you may see more um, tabs in the future. We have a general overview, and then we have the calendar. And the calendar it lists all the um, CE opportunities by date. It's by monthly calendar, and you can easily see what's offered when and uh, on what date. Then we have um, the continuing education itself broken out by format. So we have conferences, webinars, we have the subject training for NC Live, face-to-face -face or in-person workshops, and self-paced workshops. We're going to be adding to this, and in fact, at the meeting last week where I gave this presentation as well, um, one of the library directors suggested that we add a tab for trainers. Who, do, who can do good customer service training or, you know, who can it help us with, you know, a staff day? So we're working on that now. Um, another piece of feedback that we've gotten is almost too overwhelming. So we're going to have to work on that. If you get in, you'll be, I think you'll be amazed to see how much there really is there. And under the FAQ pay, tab, at least, and maybe in other places, um, Libraries can post any kind of training that they themselves are hosting and that they would um, allow others to attend. So if you're bringing in a trainer to your library to talk about, I don't know, RDA, and you've got some extra um, seats available, you can post it on um, the train station and invite your neighbors to come and join you. For the class. So it's making the most of the resources we have and we think it's going to be a, um, a big hit. So I hope you'll go and take a look at LibGuides. Also want to make you aware of a new listserv for continuing education called CE Info. And this is another place to share information about continuing education. And this is uh, different from LibGuides because it'll dump into your mailbox. You don't have to go out and find it. So some people prefer that, and if you do, then you might want to consider signing up for this. NC Cardinal. Um, well, Grant Pear, who was the NC Cardinal um, manager, did move on to another job. And I think some people were alarmed, but I, I can tell you that the State Library is very committed to this project. This is a shared open source ILS that we are making available to public libraries in the state. We've migrated six library, uh, nine last year. We've got six more planned for this year. This of course gives them a union catalog and of course the gleam in our eye and the dream and hope for the future is to one day have some sort of conglomerated um, catalog that everybody in the state can see. It doesn't mean they all have to be on NC Cardinal, but if we can reduce the number of different ILS systems, it will make it easier to, um, to do catalog sharing. To, and then, of course, that would lead to, well, somebody in Asheville wants to check out a book from Wake County, and how can they do that? And <laughs> perhaps even a courier service. And I know this is crazy in a state that's shaped like North Carolina, but we can still dream. So um, NC Cardinal is sort of the, you know, the bedrock of what we would like to um, see come to fruition in future years as real sharing efforts statewide. Um, we are we will take requests to join the consortium. We know some libraries are already, have already expressed interest. We're going to do some cataloging cleanup, and this is very. Um, necessary because um, the cataloging records that have gone into the Union Catalog are all different uh, quality. I'll put it that way. So we're going to um, contract out to do some catalog cleanup. And then we're looking at doing our first, um, we're going to do a pilot project for delivery in um, an area of the state where there's several libraries kind of clumped together, Fontana Region, which is Macon, Jackson, and Swain Counties, Haywood County, and Buncombe County, and test out a courier service in those counties to see if, uh, you know, how it works, how much it costs, you know, what the, what the problems are. 
So uh, we're dreaming big here, but um, this project will continue. It is currently LSTA funded. At some point, it, well, it's open source software, so the costs for the software are, are negligible or none, but we do have a staff member here, Tanya Procrim, who is, um, she's like your personal um, vendor, ILS vendor, and you can call her up at any time if you're on this, on the Cardinal plan and say, hey, I don't like this, we need to change this, and she can actually make um, code changes to the, um, to the uh, coding behind the project. So it's kind of like owning our own ILS, it's kind of cool. Um, so we expect that to continue to grow in the future, and um, we'll see where it takes us. But at some point, right now, we're funding the uh, migration costs for libraries, and then it's and so it's free to the libraries at this point. At some point, they'll be picking up um, their own maintenance costs, but those will still be considerably less than a, a commercial vendor. Um, the Association for Small and Rural Libraries is a um, nationwide organization and they're meeting, they're having their national conference in Raleigh this fall, in September. Uh, this is pretty big, I mean I'm amazed they have like 400 people who come from all over the country. Many state libraries host uh, or give um, scholarships. So you'll have people from as far away as the West Coast come even to this one in Raleigh, despite the fact that they work in a small or rural library. Um, the State Library it, here, we're offering 83 scholarships, and um, what that funds is a hotel room and um, the registration for 83 public library staff, in, or yeah, public library staff in the state. Uh, the great thing is the registration fee for this um, conference includes something like five meals. So once you're here, you know, you, they have to bear the cost of the travel, but once they're here, they're really not going to have to spend a lot of money at all. We're very proud to be a conference partner, and we're going to be serving as a local host, um, and we'll be hosting a reception one of the nights. I've been to this conference and I can recommend it highly because it's very targeted and it's very um, germane to the interests and needs of small rural libraries. So if you haven't registered yet, you might consider checking it out. Unfortunately, all the scholarships have already been given out. Communication. When I first came to back to the State Library, I've, I've, and I still continue, I'm doing um, some traveling around the state and I'm asking people, what is it, what are we doing well, what do, you, what do we need to do more of, what's the problem? And one thing that I keep hearing about is we'd really like a little more communication from the State Library and that is exactly why I am doing these webinars and some other things as well to help get the word out. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, this webinar, State Library Update, is being done every two months, and the next one will be in October. Uh, I encourage staff at any level to attend. It's not just for directors, it's anybody. And in fact, you can get a group of people in a room together to uh, attend if you would like. Sending questions in advance is encouraged because that has informed the content of what I'm talking about today. Some people did send questions in advance and I made sure that I in, um, in, included that information in the webinar today. Another thing I've just started doing is I'm now posting my monthly reports online. So you can see what is it that State Library staff are up to. Um, there's the um, URL for those monthly reports and if you ever have to make um, any kind of presentation you might want to check these just to see what uh, what the state library monthly report has said it might give you some content for your own report um, Mike is typing I'm going to go on to my next slide which is the thank you slide this was very fast so if I've gone too fast or if anybody has any questions now is your chance to ask.
Oh, you know what? I forgot last time everybody said we can hear you f flipping your pages. I wonder if you all heard that today. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you all coming. I really do. And um, encourage other people to just drop in. Thanks, Beth. Great. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're trying our very hardest to communicate as much as possible. Thanks, Jenny, and thanks for a great visit the other week. Thanks, Cindy. I appreciate it. So get your staff to come next time. Thanks, Cindy, again. Oh, Crystal. Okay, thanks, Crystal. I appreciate it. If you have any advice for how to improve it, let me know. Great. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Lynn. And I will see you all maybe at a future one. Thanks for coming today.